We are three days away from getting our first ever fish inside this Red Sea Max Nano Tank. Look at my smile. We're reaching a major milestone in our reefing journey and thanks to your comments, we couldn't have done it without you. We are getting to that stage. Our pair of designer gladiator clownfish are currently staying at the newly refurbished, prestigious fish hotel in Staffordshire. You've guessed it, erinsaquarium.com. We're gonna fly over or drive over on Saturday morning to visit Michael, collect the gladiator clownfish, bring them back, acclimate them at the side of the tank and then put them in on Saturday evening. We would love you, everybody who's watching this channel, to join us on that journey, come with us to collect the fish and see how we get on. So keep an eye out for our video on Saturday to see us putting the fish inside the tank. If you've watched the, the videos previous on this channel, you'll know that my son wants to be a marine biologist when he leaves school at maybe 18 or even 21 after uni. Uh, he's keen to save and preserve the world's oceans and life inside those oceans and he's already learnt so much about water parameters, chemistry, corals and fish and hopefully this journey is giving him the skills that he needs to be successful in the future and hopefully to achieve his dreams. Anyway, as you know, we've been using Dr. Tim's Vicious Cycling for the last 24 days. Patience is paying off, hopefully, and now that tank is getting cycled. But we've got some big questions that we still need to ask. Question number one. The end goal of cycling is nitrates. Do we have nitrates inside this tank? Do we have a fully functioning nitrogen cycle that can sustain our new gladiator clownfish and potential corals in the future? To answer that question, we're going to use the HANA Nitrate Checker Low Range. We got this one on pre-order from Kraken Corals. It came out about a month ago and we're going to use the HANA Checker to see if we've got nitrates inside the tank. And if we have, between zero and five parts per million, that's a great situation for adding our gladiator clownfish. You've probably seen a recent video called There's Nothing Nano About The Price. And a few people have commented on the price that my little nano has actually cost to set up. At the moment it's around about two and a half thousand pounds. What's really pushed that budget up is the amount of HANA checkers that I bought. We have got so far the salinity checker, the alkalinity checker, the phosphate checker, uh, the calcium checker, which I haven't used yet, and the nitrate checker. Well, one thing I do know is that the alkalinity and the salinity checker are worth their weight in gold, but is the nitrate checker any good? Stay tuned for the rest of this video where I'm going to do a live demonstration of the nitrate checker to see what our nitrate levels are like inside the tank. Let's take a look. So we've got the kit, we're going to unbox that in a second. Got a spare cloth just to mop up any spillages. Uh, you need glass cleaners, so I've bought these. There's a little pack, you don't come with glass cleaners, that's to wipe the vials. So you are going to need one of those. Scissors to cut open the sachets and a screwdriver to fit the battery. Now I have actually had this open uh, previously to fit the battery. But here you go, reefers look at that I think it's going to be easier to do brain surgery than, than this nitrate test loads and lo loads of equipment it's a bit overwhelming to start with so you've got three different vials you've got one two three different syringes you've got the reagent you've got obviously got the checker you've got the filter pads and then two separate reagents and also the filter disc holder so there's a lot going on here and uh, hopefully I can demonstrate how this is to be used one little tip or if anybody's got any tip getting these base plates off the bottom of the hand check is very tricky because they've got a circuit board here if you've got any tips to get these off easily let me know in the comments I would love to know by the way what do you think to that D&D jump guard thank you to everybody who uh, recommended it I love it $29.99 it looks the business very sleek design I'm absolutely loving that if you haven't seen that video please check it out on day 20 of the cycling let's get started with the nitrate test then so we're gonna fire up our nitrate checker as I say the battery's already in it and then it'll display C1 the next job is to uh, collect the large vial with a 10 mil mark and we're going to unscrew the lid we're going to use the large syringe, the 12mm syringe. Just 
going to remove my jump guard lid. Oops. There we go. Let's bob that to one side. And we're now going to withdraw seven millimeters of tank water. Seven millimeters of tank water. Like so. This is going to go into the vial. There we go. And then the next stage is to withdraw four millilitres of the reagent solution from this bottle. So put that lid to one side. We're going to use the five millilitre syringe with the adapter end. Pop that down into the solution and then slowly draw it up. What's really good about this syringe actually is it only allows you to actually withdraw four millilitres. We're going to place that into the vial with the tank water, making sure it all goes in, like so. Put that to one side and replace the cap. The next job is to take our reagent B sachet. Reagent B. Hopefully you can see that on camera. A pair of scissors and carefully cut around this like so. Put that to one side. Carefully open up the packaging and inside we've got some silver powder. I'm going to try and just make it into a little star shape. Hopefully that makes it a bit easier to pour in. And then hopefully if we can get this on camera, we're going to carefully tip in the contents, just nudging or flicking the back end of the wrapper to encourage all that reagent to enter the vial. Okay, that's that job done. Replace the lid and now we're going to shake for one minute. So we've just been shaking the vial for one minute and we've got this kind of cloudy liquid, okay? Right, next thing to do is take our 12ml large syringe and also our blunt needle, this one here, the blunt needle. We're just going to screw that onto the end and then we're going to draw up as much of the contents from the vial as we possibly can. So I'm just going to carefully make sure that's down there and then slowly draw up all the contents of the vial into the syringe like so. We're left with a tiny bit of residue at the bottom that's left behind uh, and now uh, we've finished with that vial. So our, all our liquid is inside the 12 millimeter syringe. I'm going to remove the blunt needle, pop that back in the box, and the next thing we need to do is set up our filtration system. So we're going to use the filter discs, separate those, one filter pad. How you guys are keeping up with all these steps? This is just absolutely crazy but I'm sure it's worth it when you get the numerical value at the end. So on the base plate, which is the one without the screw, you put your filter pad, and then you carefully, with, it's got an O-ring in the top section, you put that top section on top, it does actually say top, and then carefully screw that together. Not too much pressure, hopefully you don't cross thread it, and that's there. You then connect the syringe that screws onto the end of the filter disc and then we need our clean vial, 10mm clean vial and we are going to slowly press this down into the vial which might take about a minute to do but we're going to slowly 
rip that in to our vise. See it dripping through? So it's going to take about 30 seconds to a minute. So we've slowly pushed that through. It's taken about 45 seconds to a minute. Uh, the liquid is now very clear. We've done it up to the 10 mil mark on the vial. We're now going to replace the small lid on the vial. We're going to give it a little wipe down with the glass cleaner, especially the midsection of the vial, make sure that's really, really clean. There we go. And then we're going to place it into our HANA checker that's displaying C1. So we're going to open up the lid, making sure that the H of the HANA is facing forward for consistency. We're going to place the lid down and then we're going to press the button. As you can see, the HANA checker is now displaying C2, which means we've passed stage one of the check. We're now going to go on to stage two. So I'm going to remove our vial from the HANA checker. Like so. Just going to bob that to one side. And the next thing we have to do is we need to take our reagent C packaging, which we'll grab out here. So as you can see, it says reagent C. And we're going to carefully cut the packaging. In fact, I'm just going to remove the vial lid first. Carefully cut out the packaging around the dashed line. Like so. There we go. And again, just try and make that star shape with the packaging. Just to make it a little bit easier to pour. Now this is a, this is a white powder. Uh, you could do without this getting everywhere in your house otherwise it's going to look a bit dodgy right so there's my little star shape hopefully we can get a good little pouring action in so then we pour in the reagent C just tapping and encu oh, encouraging the reagent to enter the vial a little flick we have got <laughs> most of it in the vial but there is a little bit on the desk this is starting to look like a scene out of Wolf of Wall Street hopefully um, no police come round and think that we've done anything dodgy but anyway right we're gonna replace the lid I then got to shake this vial for two minutes so here we go I'm gonna reset and get the timer going two minutes Oh my goodness, two minutes. Oh. You need strong wrists or you need to go and buy an easy stir from Aquarium.com. Anyway, two minutes of shaking. It's gone a light pinkish colour. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. Right, so now I'm going to wipe down the vial. Removing all my fingerprints and sweat from shaking it so long. It's good exercise, this reefing. Okay, and again, making sure that I open up the HANA checker, place the writing to the front for consistent measurement, close the lid, and here is the moment of truth. Do we have nitrates inside this Red Sea Max Nitrate tank? We have zero nitrates ppm inside our Red Sea Max Nano. After 10 minutes of testing, and we've gone through all the steps, hopefully that was useful for you guys at home, but we've got zero nitrates showing on our checker, which means that the nitrous cycle hasn't fully developed inside the Red Sea Max Nano. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to check the ammonia levels and the nitrite levels to see where we are in the cycle. But if you've managed to watch all that section of the HANA checker video, Hope it was useful. This is going to be the longest video so far on Jay's Real Reef UK. Let's check the other parameters. So what's my thoughts on the nitrate HANA checker? Yes, it's good. I love the objective nature of the number. It's very reassuring if you've got a reef tank. I didn't like the number that I got from it. Um, and compared to the other HANA checkers, there is lots of steps, lots of stages, lots of potential to make mistakes. But overall, 
three out of five. That's what I would give it. Anyway, congratulations to Steve Connolly, who won the 200 subs prize draw. He's actually also selected a Hannah checker of his choice, and he's gone for the nitrate checker. So, Steve, if you can get your nitrate checker to work better than mine, uh, let me know how you get on with it. Uh, it's actually arrived today. Here it is in the box, and I'll forward it on to you, so hopefully you get it uh, by the weekend or maybe early next week, but let me know how you get on it. And anyway, congratulations on winning our competition. Often in the comments, you guys are asking me, why am I keep going to the shop to go and get RO water? Going backwards and forwards, collecting RO water. What you need is an RODI filter. When I first started out this hobby about four weeks ago, I wanted to keep it small scale in one room with all the equipment self-contained so I can keep a family life balance in the house. Um, but <laughs> you can already see that things are creeping out into different rooms and kit everywhere. Uh, and I think next step is an RODI filter. Um, I know uh, one person that keeps telling me to get an RODI filter is Snowy Matrix Through Water. Uh, not through snowy matrix through walker he's got a youtube channel all about walking actually it's a really cool channel uh, i'm a bit of a walker my family love walking uh, check out his channel some really great landscapes uh, on his channel but anyway i am going to get an rodi filter but i don't know which one to go for so i know crazy reef dave you said go for the vier rodi filter Hope I've said Vier right. Anyway, Vier RODI filter. I'm looking for low volume, maybe 100 litres a week, but a TDS of zero. So if you've got one that's doing that sort of job, in the comments below, please let me know which one you would recommend. Also, uh, I want to say a couple of special mentions. The next special mention is to Dave, no, Darren Longdon. Darren Longdon, you said I got something wrong with my jugs. <laughs> I wondered what you're on about at first. He noticed on one of my videos I was using a glass jug, which is not the brightest of ideas with a black glass aquarium. So now, Darren, thanks to you, I'm using a plastic jug. Also, a special thanks to Lucid Reef. Lucid Reef actually recommended us to get a pair of watchman gobies or one watchman goby and a pistol shrimp to sit and watch i've heard about the symbiotic relationship between those two fish me and my son would love to sit and watch those two so hopefully uh, next year in 2021 we can get those two into the tank also today arrived a letter from one of the people that follow this channel called back shift reefer now this guy is awesome. He sent me the sticker. I went on his Instagram channel, hashtag Backshift Reefer. Check out his Instagram channel. He's got some amazing photography of fish and corals. You'll love it. Um, but I also liked his logo. So I asked him if he could send me a sticker for my reefing cabinet. He actually sent me three. And not only that, one of them is a shiny. Now, I'm old enough to collect the football stickers, and I know that a shiny one is special, so that's definitely going in the reefing cupboard. He also sent me a little letter, which I'm going to read. He said, uh, Hope you guys are all well. Yes, we are. We're all good in the family. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. It makes it worthwhile making these videos, and yet yeah, we love the stickers. Backshift Reefer, follow him on Instagram. Great stuff. Thank you for following our journey. Anyway, my son said when we reach 500 subs that we would give away another free Hannah checker. This is getting very expensive as a Yorkshireman, but if you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because you don't want to miss out on our Saturday video, which is collecting our clownfish. Now, I did do a little bit of testing on the Red Sea test. Our ammonia is 0.4. 0.3 parts per million nitrites about 0.1 and nitrate yeah is not there at the moment so we are we are getting closer but as i say saturday is the video where we're putting the fish in anyway this is probably the longest video ever it was quicker to do the D, &D aquarium lid build than it was to do the hannah test video but anyway i hope you've enjoyed it i've enjoyed making it give us a thumbs up you guys take care out there difficult times thank you very much for watching bye bye